I know Beyonce confirmed it, but I would like to reiterate, America has a problem. And honestly, not just one problem. America got issues. America has several, several, several problems. Hey, y'all, it's Jazzy P, and I get on this microphone about once a week to discuss whatever's on my mind. Sometimes I'm joined by lovely guests, and other times it's just me. But either way, just know I'm always free to be. I want to start this episode with a lighter. Well, that was random. Because the topic today may get a little bit heavy. So completely unrelated to today's topic, I had a random memory unlocked moment to when I was teaching middle school and I was combing out my locks and then halfway, not even halfway, probably about a quarter of the way through I decided I didn't want to comb my locks out anymore. I'm not sure if I really had a change of heart or if I had more hair than I realized and the process was taking much longer than I anticipated. But regardless, I started locking my hair up again. So I had about 87 long, luscious locks flowing down my back and then about five short stubby locks in the front that I would always try to blend with the rest of my hair or braid in or try to camouflage in some way. So one day I had this bright idea that I would wrap hair, faux hair, synthetic hair around my newly budding locks and try to play it off that way. And then one student just randomly calls me out talking about, so miss, did you take fake hair and wrap it around your real hair? And did you not think that we would notice? And I don't even remember what my response was, but I was like, dang, they figured me out, figured me out. And I wasn't really trying to hide it because clearly faux locks look different than real locks. But I was like, dang, they didn't have to call me out like that. But then, as I was thinking about this memory, I realized yet again that I am a trendsetter. Not saying I'm the first one to have done this, but this was before faux locks were a thing. And I didn't even, that's not what, I mean, I was essentially trying to create a faux lock of something that looked like a lock, but I wasn't trying to do quote unquote faux locks. But several years later, Bow locks and butterfly locks are in and that has become the trend. And I'm just thinking if I could go back to that time, I would tell this girl, this this is the future right here. You laughing and you clowning me now, but this, this is the future. In just a few short years, the girlies are going to be walking around with faux locks and butterfly locks and you won't be clowning them. So just sit back and wait. Sit back and wait. As if America, the United States of America specifically, couldn't be any more egregious, she has outdone herself yet again. And I'm actually not convinced that America is a woman. America is probably a man. Um, Because I know way more compassionate women than I know compassionate men. Men are compassionate. They can be. But I don't think America is a woman. We need to stop calling her a she because America... I doubt that America is a woman. America is definitely a man. But I digress. Anyway, America and more specifically some states within his union. But then I don't like the idea of being ruled or controlled or coerced, persuaded by a man. I don't really like that. Let's just call it America. So some of the states within America are coming up with fun new ways to kill people. And obviously that is not an exciting topic, but how else do you talk about the atrocities that continuously occur without becoming depressed or downtrodden or even numb? So you kind of got to psych yourself out. And hype yourself up in order to continue having these conversations. 
So if you would humor me for another moment, the holidays have just ended a lot of, you know, festivities and families and friends coming together celebrating I'm sure there was a lot of confetti maybe even some streamers and balloons and so what I want you to do for just a moment is envision a balloon and you're filling up that balloon you're filling up that balloon you're pumping you're pumping you're pumping and then the person behind you is like that's enough that's enough you're filling it up too much you're filling it up too much and you're like, no, 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 don't worry, it's good, it's good. And you keep going, you keep going, and they're like, all right, stop, that's enough, that's enough. And you're like, nah, I got this, don't worry. And then you just push it just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. You think you got it, you think you got it. But eventually, the balloon, it pops. And while that's not exactly what happens in the case of nitrogen hypoxia, it is a method of suffocating a person by forcing them to breathe nothing but pure oxygen, essentially suffocating them, starving them of oxygen until they die. And you guessed it, Texas, Alabama, and Nebraska are super excited. Honestly, is what it how it reads to me. They're really excited about this new execution method. And so why do we need new ways to kill people? I was wondering the same thing. So I did a little Google search. And as you know, on the Free To Be podcast, we are not a news source. Um, We don't aim to disseminate misinformation, but the extent of our research on this particular platform is the first or second article that comes up when we Google, Google search. But I did click on the article Scientific American, and it seems to answer that question. So I'll read that from the article. Then Representative Mike Christian of Oklahoma first proposed using nitrogen gas as a potential form of execution in 2014 after the state came under fire for multiple botched execution attempts using lethal injection. So Alabama is set to execute an incarcerated person this month, January 2024, using nitrogen hypoxia. And I first heard this story on NPR and I picked up at a very, very interesting point. And I thought to myself while listening to the report, if there was ever any doubt in my mind about a God, this particular story removes all doubt. Now I get it. Botched executions happen often enough that this could have just been the case of that or a technicality. But... Kenneth Eugene Smith in Alabama is a victim of three failed execution attempts. Three failed execution attempts. They tried to kill this man three times and none of them took. So maybe he was the catalyst for nitrogen hypoxia execution. I'm not sure. But they tried to kill him three times and now he is set to be executed in this manner in just a few short weeks in Alabama using this method. Now, some issues have come up regarding this particular execution because it is so new. And so the two methods that are being tossed around are gas chamber or gas mask. And the issue with the gas mask is that it has to be completely airtight. There can be no oxygen into the mask. Otherwise, that will prolong the process and prolong the death of the inmate that is being um, administered the nitrogen. And so that those that are around aren't exposed to the gas. And so in the case with Kenneth, he wanted his pastor to to be by him when he was executed. And there were these concerns for the pastor's safety. And the pastor said that he really had to pray about it, pray and decide if he could be by Kenneth's side during this execution. You really, really have to pray because of this potential um, risk. And so he prayed about it and he said, you know, this is what he's called to do, the pastor. He said, this is what he's called to do. This is his assignment. And yes, he will stand by Kenneth's side during this execution, knowing the risks. Quick side note, again from this article, it says that lethal injection was developed in Oklahoma. Oklahoma? Be weird. 
I don't want any dealings with Oklahoma. And didn't Oklahoma State or some institution in Oklahoma just repeal all of their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts? Yeah, let add Oklahoma to that list of places to stay away from. Florida, Texas, Oklahoma. It's giving yikes on bikes on trikes. This one art article is <laughs> completely infuriating, but I will link it so that you can be pissed off with me. There are several points in here that just make you want to cringe and fight and scream and yell. But Karina Barrett Lane, a law professor at the University of Richmond, um, she her a quote of hers sums up the article. And so it um, the last paragraph in the article says, when asked what the most humane way to execute someone would be, Lane answered, um, firing squad. Death by firing squad is nearly instantaneous. That's certainly better than being electrocuted five or six times or being gassed to death for six to 10 minutes or slowly being suffocated under a veneer of peacefulness for 10 to 20 minutes. And that's another issue with nitrogen hypoxia execution. Because it hasn't been administered before, no one knows exactly how long this method will take. All of this is just completely sick. So if you're unfamiliar with the firing squad, again, a quick Google search. As of 2023, Mississippi, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah used the firing squad for the death penalty. In 2023, Idaho and Tennessee were debating about using the firing squad. On March 20th, 2023, the bill passed the Idaho State Legislature and was signed by the governor. But I do believe that an article read that that method is not used very often. I think it was only used in Tennessee once. Please don't quote me on that. But lethal injection is the most common method used. But firing squad is still an option for some states. When or if people do use the firing squad method, really any method, but especially the firing squad method where it's it's like you know right there hand to hand face to face I really hope that the I don't know I guess it'd be the the guards the correctional officers I don't know exactly how that works but I really hope that they are getting the mental support and the therapy that they need to know that your bullet could have potentially killed a person it's just really weird it's it's really odd to me I don't really understand that and that would be the day that I quit if I were in that position where I were, was a correctional officer and the warden was like, hey, Jazzy P, today your assignment is firing squad. That would not be lit to me. That would not be exciting. And I would decline and I would quit right there on the spot. So I also I'm, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about firing squads, how that works, how people are chosen. Um. Because that would not sit well with me. I couldn't do that. I personally could not do that. And I just really hope that anybody who is involved in that action and that decision making, I hope they get the help that they need. I hope they realize that they need help. Um, but a lot of the time, these people that are making decisions about other people's lives, they don't see it as needing help. It's a power thing. It's a control issue. But I'm still praying for them and I still pray that they get the help that they need or they get the intervention that they need because it just it's not right to me. So before I wrap up, if you really, really, really want to mess your day up, go to deathpenaltyinfo.org and just scroll through the first, I don't know, three or four articles that pop up. So as of today, um, I will read the headlines. So, article from January 5th, 24, Japan performed no executions in 2023, making U.S. the only G7 country to use capital punishment last year. Yay, America! January 4th, 2024, Utah judge clears the way for the use of the firing squad. Exciting! January 3rd, 2024, overwhelming percentage of For Florida's Hearst Resentencing hearings end in life sentences. New study from January 2nd. Research suggests the arbitrariness of facial features affects juror sentencing decisions in death penalty cases. And it's a little excerpt. 
Particular facial features such as heavy brow or downturned lips are known to cause others to view an individual as untrustworthy. So if you have thick, bushy eyebrows or a downturned mouth, jurors may think you are untrustworthy and are more likely to convict you or sentence you to the death penalty or be in favor of the death penalty for you. How exciting. And I am anti death penalty. I am really anti-prison. I haven't always been anti-prison and I can be honest and transparent about that. I am pro-reform. I'm pro-rehabilitation. There are people who I do think need to be removed from society if they are unable to get along with society, but I don't think they need to be exiled, so to speak. Um, They need to be rehabilitated they need to be rehabbed. There need to be there needs um, there need to be options for rehabilitation, and we don't we don't have that as much as we should. And that was really brought to light to me when I attended a workshop, and Dr. Bettina Love was the speaker, and she said we are quick to disappear people, and she was mainly. Well, the focus of her conversation was talking about children, but then there was this school to prison pipeline, but we are quick to disappear kids that don't fit into the quote unquote norm. We're quick to disappear people that don't fit into society. We're quick to cast them aside, act as if they don't exist, act as if they are not valuable human lives and like essentially just wash our hands of them and be done with them out of sight, literally out of mind. So regarding the death penalty, I am not in favor of the death penalty specifically because of the number of people who are wrongly convicted or people that are convicted or receive sentences that don't fit the crime. There are numerous cases on that website that talk about people being found innocent. There was one guy who was exonerated. He was on death row, exonerated after several years, was scheduled to die. They were going to kill him. And it was later proven that he was innocent and was not involved in the crime. So I am not in favor of killing people, especially when you look at the statistics. Now, with statistics, I get that they could be skewed. There's a lot of missing information, but analyzing the data that is available from the U.S. Census and the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the population in the United States is about 336 million. California, Texas, Florida, those last two want to do it, being the most populous. Um, The population of incarcerated persons as of December 31st, 2022, was 1.2 million people. That is a 2% increase from 2021. At the end of 2022, 32 people were sentenced to state or federal prison that were sentenced to state or federal prison were black, 31% were white, and 23% were Hispanic. If black people only make up 13% of the population in this country, why are 32% of the people in state or federal prison, black. Why would I be in favor of the death penalty when 32% of incarcerated persons are black? And why are black men overrepresented in that statistic? Why would I want to kill black men? Why would I be in favor of anything that kills black men? I'm not, and I'm not in favor of the death penalty. I'm not in favor of prison in the in the ways that they are used today. I am in favor of a correctional facility, a true correctional facility. There are several things that I am in favor of, and they're at their at their core, at their true essence. But somehow we have gotten away from what a lot of these things are supposed to mean and supposed to be. And um, 
you know, I'm not even sure correctional facility was probably a euphemism or maybe we're going to correct the society, the um, unincarcerated society by incarcerating people, um, black men, and getting them out of society and, and displacing them and exiling them. So that's probably what correctional meant um, at the time, a little double speak, if you will. And what's really frustrating is that all of the solutions are right in front of us. It's those that won't profit from these solutions. They're the ones that are making the decisions. And this is why we are not getting the results that we need. Because how do you solve a housing crisis? You put people in houses. You reallocate funds to services, social services that actually help and benefit people that need the help. So what if our military budget is a little bit lighter next year? If people are housed, if people have access to food and clean water, education, wouldn't it be worth it? Nah, because how do you exploit? How do you exploit people that way? If people are self-sufficient and they aren't reliant, then how do you exploit them? How do you capitalize? How do you make money? You can't. So it's simple, yet it's not, yet it is. I'm tired physically, emotionally, mentally. And I actually had a really good day today. And then I started thinking. <laughs> this mind of mine is always going. And then when I start thinking of the world, really what it was, I started thinking about the world in which I brought my son and I just apologize. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm so sorry, son. Life is so, it's so beautiful. It's so magical. It's so wonderful. But you have to fight like hell to make it that way. Because if you don't, it's, it can be so ugly. It can be so damning, so damaging. It can be so cruel and so harsh if you are not making a conscious effort to see the beauty, to see the goodness that is all around us. So I started thinking and one rabbit hole led to another and I ended up on on deathpenalty.org. Messed up my night. Because why are we thinking of new ways to kill people? Ciao. So anyway, let's stay connected. Follow me on Instagram at instagram.com slash free to be jazzy. If you are listening to this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up makes it um, easier for you to come back to this video and for other people to discover this content. So thank you. Thank you very much. If you are listening on your other favorite streaming platform, please, please, please rate it as high as you possibly can. You know, this is the best episode of anything you've ever heard before. So thank you in advance for that. If you want to join the Patreon community, you can do that at patreon.com slash free to be jazzy. There's exclusive content, early release on episodes, longer episodes, just kind of whatever, you know, however I'm vibing that week. But there are just some little, little extra perks for being over there on Patreon. However you are able to support via a like, a share, a comment, I am eternally grateful for you. Thank you so much for supporting this content. Until next time, peace.